everyone, Paul I Sam. Welcome to our latest video build. So, I am building the Hobby Design 124 Porsche 911 DLS Singer Porsche I reviewed a week or so ago. Full resin kit, multimedia. We've got everything here resin, photo etch, acetate, all sorts of goodies in this box. Not a cheap kit, but as I said in the review, when I first saw it, I knew I had to get it. But I kind of wanted to build it straight away. So, yes, so here we go. First time doing a full resin build on video, so uh, a few different things to show along the way. Hopefully the kit will go quite flawless, fingers crossed. Uh, I've got an interesting colour for it as well. So we're going to go standard procedure, we're going to get all prepped, primed, painted, decaled and cleared today. So there we are, so let's jump in and let's get cracking with the build. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos will always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. Right, so the first full resin kit we've ever built before on the channel. So things are done a little bit differently with resin. Number one, resin's a lot softer than plastic, a lot easier to work with. So when you're sanding away, it's very easy to move too much uh, material, so take your time. Number two, the resin on the hobby design kit is unbelievably clean. There's hardly any flash, no real mold seams at all. There's a few under the wheel arches. There was a couple of wisps of excess resin around the windows. Uh, the body, though, is pretty flawless, to be honest. Um, nothing there to deal with at all. So clean up and prep is really, really quick. So I've just got a 240 sander for getting any uh, larger bits out and a 220 sponge, uh, thinny sponge for getting into any areas where there's a little bit of uh, excess residue from the casting. Uh, and obviously underneath, we're not really going to see this, but as part of the course, I might as well tidy it all up. So a quick run over the sponge sander again just to get rid of any excess uh, materials. Now, resin dust is not good for you. It is uh, carcinogenic. Um, so it's always good to practice good safety measures here. Make sure you grow a dust mask on. Really should have gloves on, but we're not we're taking hardly anything off this. This is probably the most we're removing. So take your time, clear up at the end, put a dust mask on. It doesn't have to be a respirator, just a dust mask to protect your lungs. And uh, just make sure any resin dust you pick up carefully over wet cloth and dispose of. Now the engine cover's got a bit of a plug on it, a mold plug, so we've got our razor saw and we're just really, really gently, with hardly any pressure at all, just going to slowly saw away till this is gone. Like I say, resin is really easy to work with, it's really soft compared to plastic, so it does break easier, it's brittle. Um, so part of this, where it's that back piece of the engine cover, just take your time. And again with our two, sorry, our 400 UMP thinny stat sander, will come and remove any excess resin off there. So just take your time, keep test fitting, as you can see. It's on there, not bad, so needs a little bit more material removed. So we'll just work at that until it looks and fits perfectly in place. And then our wing mirrors, we've got these, they can stay on the mounts that they're on, and we can paint them as is. And that's it, that's all we need for painting, really, so quite easy and simple. Now we need to get any residue and what have you off the body. So I've got some UMP airbrush cleaner, an old toothbrush, and we're going to go over the whole body and degrease the whole thing. And you use soap and water should you wish. I've always tend to use the UMP airbrush cleaner. It's you know alcohol-based. It'll remove near enough everything. So just getting all the nooks and crannies with the toothbrush um, because it can cause adhesion issues with some paints uh, and reaction issues. So just make sure you go around, degrease the whole thing, and get rid of any remnants of any mold release or residue from the uh, casting process. Get every little nook and cranny. The toothbrush is ideal here because it gets in everywhere. Then dry it off with a clean piece of kitchen paper. Again, be gentle. You know, this is brittle. Those A pillars are very, very weak if you're not careful. So you don't be dropping this or putting any undue pressure anywhere. Just take your time, work your way around until you're happy it's gone. And then I like to get some cotton buds and get in all the little recesses and the gaps and what have you and get out any remnants of uh, airbrush cleaner and any partial potential places of any mold release um and chemicals from the molding pro uh, casting process so again it takes a bit of time to do i've sped this up it was probably about five minutes in total to do but it's a step worth doing trust me i've sprayed resin before there's been something on the resin and it's had a horrendous reaction 
and uh, yes you're back to square one again and again we do the engine cover and the wing mirrors and again just take our time with these parts i'm live here at the minute talking to you a lot of alive so yeah 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 um just go gentle and uh, count with your fingers like that 12 13 6 7 and there we go so we've got to seven apparently we're counting to seven and yeah just go around make sure you're thorough and get rid of any remnants that are left behind again cotton buds and then some clean tissue to wipe it all down once you're finished I think above all, just be thorough in your cleaning. Like I say, nothing worse. Getting your primer down is a reaction. Uh, and you've got to scratch and start all over again. It's not fun. And uh, it does get tedious when it's happened more than a couple of times to you. So just take your time. Work your way around. Clean everything up. Like I say, preparation is really easy on this. The cleanup is really simple. Um, not much to do, really. Uh, much quicker than a normal body shell. Like I say, with the beauty of the hobby designs, is high quality resin. So... That obviously pays off for some cheaper kits I've had before. You've had to fill in perfections and what have you. There's a lot more flash and uh, excess material to remove. So shows you the quality of the kit. Now I'm going to mount the engine cover separately. Uh, obviously I'm touching some of my fingers. We will wipe it down again when we've got it mounted. Now the body shell, I did try and mount on my Tamiya stand and just couldn't get it to mount securely. Uh, it was just too precarious, too heavy for it to be honest. And tape just wasn't holding it on. So I opted to use some 3M pads underneath. There's a nice, nice flat section across the rear and the front. So a couple of 3M sticky pads and some tongue depressors cut to size. Uh, and then we can mount that to a bottle to spray. Um, so yeah, much safer this way. It's not going to go anywhere. But the only thing is it's not secured on the bottom then. So you need to make sure it can't fall over or move wherever you put it. Because mine's not secured on the stand and the stand is secured under my... Um, plastic containers which i have new ones now i've got um really useful stuff ones with drop down fronts i'll pop a picture in if i remember and uh, show you what it looks like but it's a little bit easier because the front just drops down so you literally pop the front down pop it in put it back up and then we have a couple of these on they stick like hell these 3m pads are really sticky and then we can stick an old bottle under there uh ready for a uh, primer and obviously our wing mirrors are just held on by a crocodile clip and that's it we're good to go. We've degreased the rest of it like before. And then over in the spray booth, we've got some Tamiya fine surface primer. You can out the can. Thinned about 60% with Tamiya lacquer thinner of retarder. We've got a 0.35 apex or about 18 psi. And we're going to put down three, three or four light coats of this. First coat will be pretty light. Uh, we're going to build it up and make sure uh, we get a nice even coverage of primer. So somebody asked the other day, we're not using UMP anymore. And I am. I'm just moving more to lacquers i've just spotted a little bit of an imperfection there so we can sand it off i didn't really spray this side then so just get the uh, sander on there um I, I am definitely moving more towards lacquers um just because of the speed and easy use ump primers are wonderful they do work really well but i think um, i'm definitely moving over to lacquers it just suits my spray style a bit better and the way i paint but either way whichever you use it both work perfectly no issues at all just a personal preference to which one you use uh, I really wish Tammy would do a black surface primer, but they don't. So I have to use Mr. Hobby for now, which isn't the end of the world. But it would make life a little bit easier if they had a black surface primer in the Tamiya range. So like I say, our first coat of primer is going down, not too thick, but still ensure that you're getting the bottle covered. So we need to pay attention to all these windows. Make sure you're getting any areas that will be painted body colour, because this is important. This resin is flawless, absolutely beautiful. A little bit of a hair there. If you can get it at this stage, you can get it off, no problem at all. I have some nice fine point precision tweezers. I've got some old Mr. Hobby ones I use in my spray booth. Um, but yes, the body shell, lovely, absolutely beautifully cast on this. Um, it really is absolutely stunning to use. Uh, this is the first high quality resin kit I've built. A couple of, built a couple of the BBR 143rds and they're lovely. And I have another one on the stash now. A Renaissance full resin kit that wasn't the best. Um, it was a bit ropey, but this is a different world. So, Hobby Design uh, and Alpha are same company, I believe. So, same kind of kit in a way. I've got a few Alphas and a couple of Hobby Designs in the stash. So, looking forward to building them all. Um, hopefully, we'll have a pretty trouble free uh, build. We'll soon find out. But the body shell is the first step out of the way for me, as always. So, we've got a nice even coverage of primer on the uh, body shell engine cover and wing mirrors and then just quickly going on to the final coat this is the third coat now and as you can see we cover the yellowish resin really well this is what i wanted to do 
Um, and yeah, make sure we get everything covered. Now, when I tested the paint for this, I tested it over a, a gray and a white primer. The white just made the metallic flakes pop a little bit more. Obviously, we're using a car paint, so metallic flakes aren't to scale. It's just the way it goes, unfortunately. Uh, but it looks good. So here we go. Next morning now, look how vibrantly white that is. It just shows you how worth it is properly priming things. Now, I'm going to go around with a very well-used 3000 grit Tamiya sanding sponge. I'm just going to lightly take off any high spots, any imperfections, and just basically tape back the primer really gently. We don't want to burn through and have to reprime again, but we're just taking off the very upper surface. So any high spots, any spits of paint or dust, we can get them off. And this is the journey on the way to getting as good a paint job as we possibly get. Now, dust is inevitable when spraying cars. They are an absolute dust magnet and a pain in the backside because you're guaranteed nothing will land until the worst possible moment. I've had bugs land in my clear coat before, flies, midges, all sorts of stuff land in there from flying in from outside. And of course, you do get the inevitable dust from in and around your room. So just take your time, go around. This is my motto, take your time. Uh, patience is key. Patience really is a virtue when modeling. Uh, it can save a lot of heartache. Just let things dry properly. Take your time, do things properly. Yes, I cut corners from time to time, uh, but it doesn't always work. So, you know, stick with what works best for you. Uh, I'm just going around again, just clean all this up. Just give it a good light sand. And again, gives us a key for our next paint now the paint timing for this was paint nuts it's a touch up paint for real cars you put your paint code into their website you can buy a 20 mil touch up pen like this this cost me about 17 pound delivered or you can get like a 50 mil bottle for about 21 pound delivered now you can thin this well over um 60 percent so 20 mil of paint uh, got me about 50 55 milliliters of thin paint i thinned it with mr harvey leveling thinner so more than enough, we're not going to use any more than half on this. And I've already sprayed two spoons as well off camera. So it does go a long way. I've used these on several cars. We use them on the R32 Skyline. And the blue Escort Cosworth Imperial Blue um, RS Cosworth we did. Uh, and a few other kits as well. And they've always been beautiful paints. Really nice. And there's no reactions whatsoever. You can spray this just like TS spray. You can put it on wet if you want. I wouldn't know. Um, but obviously we're spraying over resin, so there'll be no reactions anyway, so we're all good there. Uh, I've got my Badger paint mixer, taking my life in my hands, mixing it that high up in the bottle, but it works. I've got my glove for hand protecting the model, <laughs> and then we get it all thoroughly mixed. Make sure you mix it properly, because there's a lot of metallic flakes and pigments down the bottom of the bottle, so the bottle that do add to the color of the paint, and we've got our Tamiya anti-static brush, I'm just going to give everything a quick wipe over before we get some paint down. Now, I did apply probably seven, eight, maybe nine coats of paint over this over the course of a couple of hours. Uh, we've got a 0.35 Apex. We're about 5, 12 to 15 PSI on this. Uh, we're just going to put down several light like, coats going from side to side, up and down, crisscross pattern until we've got everything covered. Now, on colors like this, this is quite an opaque color. Pay attention to panel edges, panel lines. Uh, like the inside of that sill there where the bodywork extension is. Uh, and maybe put a little bit more paint down on another pass because you will find it takes a bit more to fill. So this is the kind of speed I'm going to go around, but I'm going to speed it up now so we can get through. Uh, and as you can see, it's going to take quite a few coats of paint to get this to cover. But I'd rather take time doing it than hose it on because we get the proper contrast of colour then. And trust me, I think this is a beautiful colour. I took a real kind of punt on uh, picking this colour, whether it was correct or not, and I think it is. It's not exactly the colour of the car I've seen. I think the colour of the car we've got pictures of is under different lights, so it looks totally different. But hopefully it'll be an approximation of the colour I saw.
Okay, there we go. This is our final coat now. As you can see, the colour has changed drastically. It looks a lot darker under the lights here. Um, I've got some pictures of it at the end. You'll see it properly. Uh, it's a beautiful colour. It's a very, very beautiful, pretty green. It is a metallic colour. The metallics are just a little bit bigger than I would have liked. But this is what you get because most of the paints we're using from manufacturers are car paints at the end of the day. It's what they are. It's only things like TS and the LPs and that. There are model specific. So you've got to roll with the punches and it is what it is. But happy with the colour. It does look totally different on the different lights. I'm very eager to take it outside. It's a sunny day here at the minute. I have a little bit of a sun trap around the back of where my modelling cave is. But the 2K is not quite dry yet as you'll see in a bit. And I don't want to venture outside just yet. I ruined the hard work, but I think under daylight, the colour's really going to pop. But like I say, this is prop. I reckon in all honesty, it's about 9, 10 coats this. Just very light coats building up. I've alternated between side to side and up and down. And we've got everywhere completely painted. All the panel lines are full. And uh, very happy with this. And as you see, we haven't even used half the paint. So that's a win-win all round. Uh, and after this is painted, we'll leave it overnight to dry. So the next day now, and there we go, there's our colour. Absolutely stunning. Lovely, very happy with this. And we've got some decals to put down. Now we've got all kinds of different colored stripes and uh, decals for the kit. Uh, we had white, uh, black, like a maroon, uh, a mink color, a lime green color. Uh, and I did originally think white, and then I thought, let's get a look a bit too in your face. And I thought black, I thought you can't really see black. So I actually opted for the mint green color to see what the contrasting greens would look like. So the Porsche logos themselves are white. That's how it is on this car. So hobby design decals used many times. They're absolutely brilliant, no problem at all. So a couple of seconds in the warm water, pop it in place on the kit. No problems with these decals. They went down absolutely beautiful. I'm just looking at making sure this goes where I think it goes, which is here. There we go. So yeah, get everything lined up, refer to your uh, call-outs to see where they go. No problems there. And then on the side, we've got one of the mint green colours. So this might not be to everybody's taste, but I thought it was a good contrasting colour. There we go. I quite like it myself. Uh, I think it looks really good. So these are in green, and then the Porsche uh, name in the centre is white. So they're a little bit tricky to get lined up. They are perfectly sized for the kit, so make sure you get one end level with the other and I put them just above the bottom of the door shut at the bottom uh, to use it as a, a marker and then use a brand new water pen to just gently put it in place, check it's all lined up and then we can hit it with some UMP uh, normal decal solution followed by strong. That's where I found set it, normal, then strong, leave it, let it be uh, and then come back again and hit it later. We will have to cut the door shut which we'll do later on. But for now, my main um, job is to get these fully lined up and in place. A little bit tricky, like I say, just getting them lined up. I had to keep re-wetting them to remove them. Um, but they went down, no trouble at all. Really good decals from Hobby Design. And uh, I'm loving this colour. I think it looks really good. Same on the other side. Just make sure you've got the right way around. The shorter bar goes at the front. And uh, yeah, again, as always, take your time. No rush here. You better to get them lined up. I did panic at this point. Like, uh-oh, uh-oh, oh, oh, there we go. Thank God for that. It's on. So like I say, you're better taking your time rather than ruin everything, uh, especially on these ones on the rear bumpers and front bumper. These are quite tricky, and it did take some awkward lining up. Trying to get them central in the line was quite difficult, but a little bit of perseverance and patience uh, and some careful placing, we got them all in place. And uh, yeah, like on the colour of this, like on the contrast, it was a little bit in my face at first, but it's really grown on me. Uh, I think black would have looked too, you wouldn't have seen it really. Uh, I think white would have been too bright and the other colours were no good at all. What it really needed was like a grey. I think grey would have looked good on this. But hey, it is. Now the front bumper's got a huge, big, long, probably five, six inch decal. So do do I have done it there. I'm using the sheet to line it up. And again, take your time, work your way around, get it all nice and straight and level and exactly where you'd like it. Everything's set now. we set them all down. we come back about an hour later and we're going to cut the door shut. This is where the panel line is for the door. So we get a nice fresh blade and our knife. Uh, just slice down through the decal where the door shut is. We're going to hit it with the decal solution. Get rid of a poke in with the uh, water pen to get the decal into the uh, panel line and it just gives a natural gap and obviously we've got a panel line to this as well 
So quite important to add that, otherwise the panel line will get underneath the decal, which we definitely don't want. Uh, but yeah, it just got some strong UMP here. I'm just going to pop it in place like so. And again, repeat it to the other side. Just be confident here. Don't be scared of it. Just follow the door shut line nice and confidently, uh, and you shouldn't have any problems at all. There we go. That's those cut. That's those in place. So we can leave those to dry. Don't leave any excess decal solution on them. Wipe it off. Don't let it pool up because it can mark your paint. And then we've got the white Porsche for this side. This one didn't quite go on straight, but we can straighten it up no problem at all. So a nice bit of contrast between the white and the greens. I do like this. And then the other side as well. There's also a Porsche logo, which I put on the bonnet or the hood. Uh, but there's also a metallic one to go on later. So I stuck one on now and we'll put the metallic one over it later because you won't really see it. So it's not going to make any difference really at all. There we go. This one went on much straighter, much easier. There we go. Again, hit the with UMP, normal and strong. Again, dried for about six hours and we've got some Tamiya panel line wash. This is enamel based. We've thinned it a little bit with some Sansador odorless mineral spirits, just a thinner a touch. I was using capillary action to get it all around all the panel lines. Uh, let it dry for half hour or so and then wipe off the excess. So I went for a very dark uh, grey, really, really dark grey. Not quite black, but certainly a very dark grey by mixing the grey and the black together. And again, just touch it. The capillary action should carry the, um, the wash all around the model, no problem. And then on the back, there's a little vent on the rear window. Just going to add some in there. Like I say, leave half an hour or so. Then come back with a cotton bud and just wipe off any excess. With a little bit of sand or uh, mineral spirits on there. It'll get the excess off and then clean it all over with a nice clean piece of tissue. So it's an important step. This thing adds a bit of depth to a model. Not everybody does it. And nobody has to. Of course not. It's just one of those uh, steps I like to do. And there we go. With some clean tissue, we can go around. You might have to get a cotton bud as well to get in some tighter areas. But just be careful because your decals aren't sealed. Don't be too rough around them. Uh, although they should be set in place. Uh, just be careful because they are still susceptible to damage. Uh, go around. And what my tip with the panel line wash is, when you think you've got it all, put it down for 10 minutes, pick it back up, and I bet you'll spot somewhere you've missed. It always pops out. Normally, just as I'm putting my tack coat of 2K down, I spot an area of mist. So I tend to put it down and pick it up a couple of times to ensure I haven't missed anywhere at all. Now, I did get a very small paint chip on this sill. So I've got a micro brush. I've just put a little bit of the paint in there. Just touch it on there. Instantly covers the hole, no problem at all. There you go. Look, I just spotted a little bit of wash that I missed. There you go. I just let that dry overnight. So this is the night before. This was last night on last night's live show on the Wednesday night. And here we are the following morning at about half eight in the morning, trying to get this 2K so I can go live with you lot. So we're going to go with 9 mil of 2K, 3 mil of thinner, 3 mil of hardener. Obviously, because it's a three to one to one mix. Um, we had plenty left over at the end, but I would have used a six mil. I probably used about seven mil in total. So always worth mixing a little bit extra. Well, it's up to you. It all depends how you go. But yes, it's just the way it works. So three mil of hardener into the nine mil of thin uh, clear. So we do a two and a one. Make sure the pipette's completely empty. Put the bottle lids back on everything. Get everything out of the pipette and give it a really good stir to mix it all together and get the chemical process on its way there we go that pipette's never going to get used again got a fresh pipette i'm going to put in three mil of the thinner so two mil and a one mil there we go again put the lids back on put them out of the way again give it a really good stir important this one it makes it go a bit hazy when you put the thinner in so you give it a really good stir up and again throw the pipette away We've got our 190 micron paint strainer. I tried to get bigger ones, couldn't quite get bigger ones. You know, these could look like hats. So yeah, a bit of a size difference on the last lot. And there we go. We've got the Apex 0.2 mil. I'm going to moisten the work area with some water. I'm not going mad. I'm just wetting the kitchen towel. And the idea behind this is because it's wet, if any dust or anything lands there, it should stick to the wet surface and not take off again and land in the model. Does it work? I think it does. I've made precautions over the years of redoing the booth with fresh uh, kitchen paper, fresh filter, wiping it down, hoovering the room beforehand, like the day before, uh, wetting the area, and it does seem to cut down the dust a little bit. 
dust is dust. If it's going to find its way in your model, it's inevitable. There's not much you can do to stop it. But the more you can do, the better. If you do get any pools of water like I have in the masking tape, wipe them up. And then we can get started with our clear coat. So what we're going to do, we're going to show the speed uh, I clear coat. And I'm going to speed it all up as we go through uh, to the last part. Um, actually, no, I'm not, I'm not going to speed it up today. Actually, no. Do you know what we'll do? We'll show the whole process in real time to music. I always speed it up. But I think it's nice to see the speed somebody does it if you're trying to watch and learn. And that's what my videos are all about. We're trying to help people uh, into doing this. So we've got our Tamiya anti-static brush. Like I say, I'm going to leave this to spray a full time. So it's a little bit longer. So sit and watch if you want. If you don't, you don't have to. You can fast forward. But, you know, you take on board what I do and maybe figure out things for yourself. But I will show the speed that I 2K. So the first coat is just a tack coat. This is the coat that goes down where they go really tacky. I let it off gas for 10 minutes. And this should stop any runs on our subsequent uh, clear coats. Now, I have changed how I do the clear coats. I'm doing... Tack coat, a medium wet coat, and then for the third coat, I'm probably doing two or three very light coats almost straight after each other. That way, I'm not building the 2K up too much, and it's definitely not going on as thick. Uh, and with the, that in combination of the 2 mil Apex, I think it's going to be more control of the clear coat, and it's definitely not looking as thick and toy like. Right, let's crack on with this while we listen to some music. So 10 minutes have elapsed and our first tack coat as off gas. We're here again uh, with probably a semi wet coat I class this as, so it's not quite a fully wet coat. We're just getting it down so we can see the presence of the 2 coat, 2K now. So you can see it getting a lot more glossy without going mad because if you put it on too thick now, you'll get runs. So you just take your time and just keep going around. So I've got my box to the left with a new drop down front. Um, and it's making life a little bit easier. Let's lift things up. Just open the door and pop them in. Really, really good. And as you can see, there's our tack coat. So it's a very slight semi-gloss coat. And this one, as you can see, we'll put on a little bit of a heavier coat this time. Going a little bit slower with our clear coat. I'm going to build it up. You should see at some point how much I'm putting down. There you go. You can see just how much has gone down. So not a huge amount. Uh, just the next level up from 
uh, the tack coat. And like I say, we'll work our way around until we've got a nice even coat all over it. Right then, so another 10 minutes has elapsed. Our second semi wet coat has off gas, and we're going to come in now with our third coat. So, this one we're going to try and get our full uh, 2K gloss coat done. Like I say, I'm not going to go mad and hose on this third coat. I'm going to put down a few slightly thinner coats and just build it up slowly. And what we'll do is we'll build a coat up, uh, put it back in the box when we do the wing mirrors and what have you, bring it straight back out, put another slight coat down. So we're just not going really heavy because we could hose this on. But I found doing that it gives you a really thick 2K. Uh, using the 02 mil and doing this, it definitely goes on a little bit easier. Again, not necessarily the right way of doing it, but it's working for me at the minute and uh, definitely uh, helping get a much thinner clear coat. So like I say, you'll see me taking it in and out of the box every now and then. Ooh, uh, uh, we're just putting down the same like coat, building it up slowly until we get that flawless glass clear coat that we're after. And there we go. After subsequent thinner coats, we have our clear coat. This is um, just after I've finished doing it. So we are just having a quick inspection to make sure that 
There's no runs. Everywhere is nicely glossed. The colour is stunning. It's absolutely beautiful. Really happy with this. This doesn't do any justice under this light. We've got a few dust spots here and there. But hey, it's just the way it is. And after about an hour or two, this is it. All fully leveled out. Now you can see the difference. We've got a few dust in that door. This one's not bad at all. Just a one door. How, how silly is that? Um, no runs. And everything looks really, really good. Absolutely stunning colour. Over the moon as it's turned out. Like I said, the pigment and the metallic flakes are a little bit big. Nowhere near as bad as like the Corvette. But it's only really noticeable under very intense light so i'm really looking forward to getting this outside but this is how it looks on my bench i don't think the metallic flakes are too too big but they are noticeable there but what a difference the color is under more intense lighting so once this is in my like photo booth it's going to look absolutely fabulous it really is and uh absolutely made up with the color it's absolutely stunning beautiful but like i say i really can't wait to get it out in natural sunlight and i'm hoping I can do that before this video is uploaded and tag on a couple of pictures at the end. So fingers crossed as we get to the end of these pictures and I carry on talking, we can see it in all its glory outside. Fingers crossed, eh? Let's see. But lovely colour. What a great kit to build. Uh, the body is just flawless. Hopefully the rest of the kit is going to be okay. No real dramas, but this thing's going to look really pretty. Happy with that mint green uh, stripe on the side. It's come out really, really well. Uh, right, so yeah, I took it outside. Nice bit of a uh, sunny day here in the Wirral, northwest England, Merseyside. And uh, yeah, like I say, metallic flakes, not the smallest, but what a wonderful colour. The pictures don't do it justice. Uh, to my eye outside, it's a stunning, stunning colour. Uh, it's got a weird gold flip in the uh, metallic flakes, and it just looks beautiful. Really is nice. So glad I chose this colour. The 2Ks turned out really well. Come out very, very nice. Once this is flattered and polished, it looked great. And uh, yes, eager to get on with this one. But sadly, we now need to leave this and go back to the Suzuki. Which, it's not sad in the way because I was enjoying that as well. Um, but we'll be back to this one very, very soon. But wow, what a colour. Absolutely beautiful. Really nice. Look at that clear coat. You can see the side of my house there. Absolutely stunning. There we are. That's where we're at today. Uh, very happy that's come out. The body, absolutely beautiful. Flawless resin. Absolutely stunning. Um, great colour. Really happy with that colour. As I said throughout the video, the metallic flakes are a little bit bigger than I would have liked, but they're not too in your face. I think out in the sunlight, under really intense light, it's never really going to be seen like that. In my pictures at the end of the video, it won't look like that at all, hopefully. Um, but happy with the colour. Happy with the decal colour choice as well. And if the rest of the build goes as swimmingly as this has, hopefully it'll be an enjoyable build. So there we are. Sadly, this is going to one side for a bit while we work on the Suzuki again. I've been promising to get back to that, so we are. Uh, we've got to get back to the framework and the swing arm, get the engine mounted, and see what else we can get done on it for part three of that. So it's been a while since we've been working on that, so hope to get back to that over the next day or so, and uh, see if we can get the next video out on that. There we are. That's it. Not much else to talk about, really. Hopefully, the rest of this kit's going to build up all right. Um, hope we get no fit issues or any issues along the way. And it's quite a straightforward build because I can't wait to see this thing finish. Hopefully, it's going to look good. Um, so, quite excited to get this one done. It'd be a shame we've got to put it to one side for it, but hey, it is what it is. So, there we are. So, thanks for watching today, everyone. As always, like support the channel as a Patreon me, a PayPal me, and a Buy Me a Coffee link in the description down below as well as links to everything ISM and me orientated from the uh, Facebook page and forum, umpretail.com, offer hangout group, the live show page, the offer, sorry, the GB page as well, my own personal modeling page, Paul ISM uh, Scale Models, and the uh, my scale mates is on there as well, as well as a link to the other channel, the Paul ISM Live of the Bench page, a uh, channel where I stream near enough every single day live in the mornings, Wednesday and Friday nights. Um, come over there, make sure you're served and come and join us and uh, join with all our community over there. So thanks for watching today. I uh, hope you have a Suzuki video up in the near future, uh, maybe a review or two as well. And uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Make sure you sub to the channel, click the thumbs up, hit that bell notification to get notified of the latest videos and leave a comment. The comments add a lot to videos as well, all the thumbs up and interactions. So make sure you leave one. 
All right, so there you go. Enjoy the rest of your day. Question. Oh. Question. What was Al's funny word? There we go. What was Al's funny word? There we are. So enjoy the rest of the day, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.